now some of the, the things that have happened already in the past. I'm going to just not hit on some of those as we get ready to close out, just so that you can understand what we're talking about with these blood moons and all of this. All right. Elul 29 is the day before Rosh Hashanah. Um, and, 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 and what, is, what that is, is that that's a, that's, that is like a, uh, an eve before the time of the blowing of the trumpets. All right. That is on the Jewish calendar. It's amazing. God gave a calendar. He's always going by his calendar. Right. He don't seem like he's acknowledging so much about the, the Gregorian calendar that we use today <laughs> that the Romans came up with. But, uh, you, know, he, you know, he knows what time it is. Yes. But he always puts prophetic messages based on the calendar that he gave. Yes. Now, in the year 2001, the Dow fell 684 points. All right. This was the largest drop in U.S. history. Right. Many of you might remember that 9-11 took place the same same year. OK, then we find that in 2008. All right. Seven years later, the Dow fell again at 777 points. And that was on September the 29th, which coincides with Elul 29th. Now you would think 777. God is trying to tell us something that it coincided with the Jewish calendar on the 29th of the same year. That was 2008. That was the next largest drop in Dow Jones history. We're talking about the stock market. Well, guess when the next one is? Seven years later is what? 2015. And we are right upon the date of that right now. If the pattern holds true, this year we will see the biggest stock market drop all right, all right. in all of history. All right now. If it all holds true. All right. Why? I believe because we're seeing more of the oppression of the poor than we ever have. It, is, it, is, it has gotten worse. And so I believe that if God is going to do what he says in his word, and he always does, we're going to see a shaking in the earth. A uh, man by the name of Jonathan Kahn, who is, a, uh, who is a Jewish author, he's written a couple of books that's based on this. First one called The Harbinger. You can get that from bookstores anywhere, Amazon.com. And he was talking about the 9-11 and how it was prophetic, uh, a prophetic message. It was already uh, prophesied in the Bible about that. But this most recent book called The Mystery of the Shemitah is, based, is, is much of the things that I'm talking to you about here today. But this is where he began to really show us uh, all of the signs throughout times. Remember, God said that it, back in Genesis, uh, uh, he said that he would use the stars and the moon and the sun as signs and seasons for us to be able to tell when he is doing special things in the earth. And he's always done that. And it always started with the Hebrew people. We see in America, the abortion rate has gone higher and higher. Look out, look out. And that means there are billions of unborn babies right. slaughtered Come year on. after year. In the day of Jeremiah, they were killing babies. Yeah. They were sacrificing them to idols. This was one of the signs that they were in apostasy. It's also a sign that America is in apostasy when we don't care about little babies, innocent blood being shed, and we're doing it every day and turning it into big business. Planned Parenthood is the, the organization where your government is taking your tax money to give it to them, even though they say it's all about women's health. It's not about women's health. It's more about just killing babies because that organization has killed more than any other organization in the world it's not about women's health it's because they're sacrificing children to a demon spirit then we also find the mistreatment of the poor the mistreatment of the poor which has been going on in the past uh, uh, four or five years more than any other time in history mistreatment of the poor what does that mean because of taxes because of high prices because they want to make it look like they're trying to help the poor. And in other words, uh, if you don't if you don't have uh, provide jobs and 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 a place where people can get their own income and help themselves, 
then you really are oppressing the poor. When you say that they got to depend on the government and the government is going broke. The government's going broke, money people don't even realize how broke their government is. The, the United States used to be the, 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 the highest nation or, or, or the highest in being a creditor nation. But now it's the highest in being the debtor nation. In other words, we're in more debt than ever before. $22 trillion in debt. I said that $22 trillion in debt. How would you like to get a credit card bill for $22 trillion? Can anybody pay that? We don't even know what that looks like. And we owe that. That shows where we are right now. Now that we have allowed homosexuality to be normal, or we call it normal now, Let's marry them. Let's treat them like everybody else. You know, let, let's not offend them. Well, you know, this, this, this is what is considered the last straw because in the time of Jeremiah, sodomy had become a big deal thing. And every time they allowed sodomy uh, to take place in the nation, that's when they would see God's judgment because this is what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah because of their pride, because of their arrogance, and because they got involved in all of these uh, lewd behaviors and homosexuality being the number one thing happening, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Then he did the same thing with Israel. And you, as you can see, he wiped them out and scattered them to the other parts of the earth. Finally, the scripture talks to us about Israel and our relationship with Israel and the Jewish people, how important that is. It is important because God said, I will bless them that bless you, Israel, and I will curse them that curse you. And recently, our government has made this uh, agreement with our enemies, Iran, which Israel said, don't do it. It's the most dangerous thing you can do. Why would you make this kind of an agreement with your enemies when they got missiles pointed at you? They're ready to destroy the United States and Israel. Right. Why the United States and Israel? Because the United States had the greatest number of Christian missionaries that would go around the world and Israel because they're Jewish people. Right. So Christians and Jews are persecuted in these last days and they are the target for the Antichrist. That's where we are right now. Taking Israel, we have, we might as well just, just put ourselves under the nuclear bomb and say, here, shoot us, <laughs> blow us away. No, that, that, that's always been our safe haven, to be allies with Israel. That's why he said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for how it goes for them, it will also go for you. So we ought, we ought to want peace. We talked about the solar eclipse in the Shemitah year. In 1931, and in, also in 1987, we saw great drops or the Wall Street collapse. The Great Depression, you remember that? Yes. Then again, it happened in 1987. And we've, we, we realized, as we were talking earlier, the Tetrat that took place in the 1940s. 1948, Israel became a nation again. And the next two years, they began to go back into Israel. And then in 1967, that was the Six Day War. And, and the result of that was Jerusalem became the capital of Israel once again. And there has not been another Tetret since that time. This 19, oh, excuse me, 2014 and 2015 was the next thing that would happen. The next time that we would see the Tetret, the four blood moons happening exactly on Jewish feast days. I do believe God is saying something to us. If it's nothing more than it's time to get your soul right with the Lord, if it's nothing more than you need to have your assurance in Jesus Christ and knowing that he is your Lord and Savior, if nothing else, he is saying that. You don't have to look around and just say, well, is it gonna be an earthquake? Is it gonna be a tsunami? Is it gonna be war? Uh, you know, it is what it is, whatever it is. 
just be right with Jesus. Because this is Rosh Hashanah uh, tonight, starting tonight and, and into tomorrow, I believe it's a good idea for us to have the blowing of the trumpet because I'm looking for the shift. I'm looking for a shift and I'm looking for a sifting. I'm looking for God to do something spectacular in the church world. I believe that's about to be a change. Something is going to happen and, you know, all we got to do is be prepared for it. Amen. And so it just so happened that it would fall on a Sunday this year. And I believe that even though tonight is the beginning of it, I think we need to to just stand up and acknowledge the Feast of Trumpets that this year, this time, this season. We want God to do whatever God wants to do. But we want to have our hearts right with him. Amen. 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 We will have the blowing of the trumpet. If I can. I believe as we are blowing, we're summoning the harvest, not the harvest of of wheat, not the harvest of corn, but the harvest of souls. The north and to the south. The west. And the east. <coughs> Which way is that? That way. I want everybody to just lift your voice and say, Lord, Lord bring in the souls. Bring in the souls. <coughs> Those such as should be saved. Lord, let there be a release for your people. Relieve the, Relieve the poor. Relieve the oppressed. Relieve the oppressed. Lord, Lord, pour out your spirit, out your spirit. in these days. Let us see healing. Let us see miracles. Let us see power released in the earth. Hold us fast. Help us to know the answer and to know how to minister to the lost, to draw men and women, boys and girls, into the kingdom of God. Lord, Lord, let this church stand, let church stand. And, let and let us be real and let the realness, let the realness of, the of the Holy Ghost be evident in this place. In Jesus name, in Jesus name. We, sound we sound the trumpet that you will pour in, you will pour in those, who those who need to be saved and those who come crying, those who come crying. after you. We claim this to be a year of release, a time of shaking, and a season of shifting in the things of God. Hallelujah. Give them a loud praise, our friends.